Well, good morning all this morning. Good morning. Glad that you guys are joining us. And this morning, um, I would like to say that we are all involved together. So mm. please shake off any the lethargicness and uh, feel part of this morning. Know that your prayers count, your participation counts. Um, that to commune with God this morning requires active participation. So wipe the sleep out of your eyes if you've just got up. Um, stretch if you want to stretch before worship. We don't want anyone pulling muscles when you get too excited this morning. Um, but this morning is going to be a great time. Um, if you're new with us, there's a little eye at the top of your screen that you can click and we'll just tell you more about us. Um, we're having communion later. So get some elements ready for us, some juice and some bread. We're great for you to join us. Um, there's lots of celebration this morning. Um, we just want to start with a celebration that happened last weekend with Sheldon having been baptized. What an awesome experience. And we've got a little clip we want to share with you here that you can just share in this moment with us. Then you've got the wildest of them all. That moment when Jesus ripped the keys from Satan then and he said, Here, I've got the keys. In me, you've got life. Tell them today you die, the old self dies yes. off. Yes. You're going to go into this watery grave in the same way that Jesus went into his grave. And as you're underneath the water, the old Sheldon dies, the old ways die. The power that it has or had over you will die. And as you come up, Sheldon, you're a new creation. The day when Jesus was baptized, the word says the heavens opened up and the Father came. That shows you the Father's love. He just couldn't help himself but come and look at his son being baptized. Sheldon today is no different. The Father is looking from above. The heavens are open. And he's saying the same thing. He says, this is my son and I'm so proud of him. Sheldon, I'm going to baptize you in the name of our amazing Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. What an amazing journey, Sheldon. Um, I just know with Holy Spirit covering you like this, there is so much more that you have in store for you. And we just praise God for your commitment that you've made. This is awesome. And we celebrate and walk with you all the way. Amen. Amen. Just want to share with you um, from the 18th to the 28th, we're going to be joining with churches all over South Africa as well as over the world in a prayer initiative called The Return, um, with the focus being on repent, return, and revive. Um, you will, we will be giving uh, prayer pointers out during, during this time uh, through our connect groups. But we really want to encourage you all to press in, to pray for revival, to pray for our nation in this time. On the 26th, there will be a national day of, of prayer and repentance. And we will share the link with you that we encourage you all to, to join that. There will be people fasting as well. So we encourage you to, um, to make this your own, not, not just joining with others, but really um, get involved and become a part of it. Today is also the Cotton Day of Prayer. And so we're going to join Lowell and a few people who are praying um, also for our nation through a scripture, and we just encourage you as well to really take part in this. Don't just listen. Yes. Let these prayers be your prayers as well. Um, good morning, everyone. Today we join in with the rest of the Church of the Nations churches, and um, we are praying together as the body of Christ 
using um, a scripture from Psalm 107, verses 19 to 21, which says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness. Will you pray in your hearts? Will you, will you pray as we lead you um, and as we join in and, and seek God's face and his heart for our church and for our nation? Thank you. Amen. They cried out to the Lord. Lord, we truly cry out to you. We humble ourselves before you and we exalt your holy name. We love you and we praise you and we thank you for your goodness. And we ask, Holy Spirit, be our lamp and be our light every day, every step. And so, Father, we thank you that you move when we worship and that you fight on our behalf. And Father, we declare that our hearts will not faint because of things around us. Thank you, Father, that you will rescue us from our circumstances and from our distress. And we cry out for that, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you, will, that you are our salvation, Lord, because you are the answer to every circumstance in our lives. And therefore, Father, we declare that you are the great I Am. The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you, Abba Father, that we have the authority to come boldly to your throne of grace, bringing the nation, the country of South Africa, and indeed the continent of Africa before you. Father, we want to repent for everything, for those involved in things which are not of you. We want to repent for every blood sacrifice, including the blood of babies killed through abortion. We repent for those who refuse to know you and for those who have turned their back on you. We repent for the sin of offense which wounds the soul and causes sickness in our bodies. Father, you are the God, you are our glory, the God who sees. And we thank you for that. And Father, we also thank you that you are Jehovah, Rapha, the God who heals. We pray for an understanding, respect and emotional healing between cultural groups. We pray for physical healing for those facing debilitating diseases and for those who have contracted coronavirus. We speak to this virus and say from the moment, from this moment on, you are neutralized, so die in the mighty name of Jesus. Your assignment on this earth is over. We pray for healing our souls that we may declare all is well with my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for Psalm 10720, which says. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Bless you, Abba, Father. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are the God who satisfies every longing soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for satisfying our souls. Thank you that we are your children. Father, forgive us all our souls. Forgive us. For we have taken you for granted, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, forgive us for misinterpreting your word and striking covenants among ourselves instead of you. Father, we come before you as a church to glorify you and thank you for healing us from every unrighteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, we ask you, Father, we ask you, we cry to you for deliverance from our distractions in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, deliver us from our distractions in Jesus' name. Father, deliver us from our distractions in Jesus' name. Father, deliver us from our distractions in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that you satisfy our longing souls. Thank you that you are always there for us. Thank you that you are who you are and you manifest when you want to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that you are the Lord. You are the great I am. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give Amen. Thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. Father, we, we just come before you in incredible things. 
we do not deserve all that you have given us. We fail you. We, we get distracted. We don't listen. We walk away. And yet, you are so full of loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus, that you are gracious and compassionate, that you are slow to anger and abounding in love, Father. You are so good. You are so full of love and kindness towards us. And, and we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it at all, Lord. But you just, you just pour out your love on us. And we are so grateful and so thankful for that. And we thank you, Jesus, for all you do, for your wonders, your many wonders that we don't deserve. Father, that you guide us, you protect us, you're our provider. You are the one who fights our battles. You are constantly there. You never leave us or forsake us. Father, there are so many wonders and we are just so grateful, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the privilege of being called your sons and daughters. And we want to live up to that, Jesus. We want to honor you in everything we do and say. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thanks, team. Um, and thank you all for joining in prayer. Um, we ask that you press into these scriptures. We will send them out during the week as well. But just um, allow yourself to be activated that you are making an impact through your prayers. Um, we, we want to engage and get serious about our prayer. And our prayers coming up before God is a wonderful thing. And He does hear us and He responds to our prayers. Mm. Um, we want to give a time of, of an opportunity for us to respond with our tithes and offerings. Um, again, it's an expression of giving thanks to our Lord, our God and King, mm. that His love endures forever. And we are so grateful for all His provision towards us, His looking out for us. Um, and this is just one way in which we can express that, um, that will help with the work of the ministry um, as we engage and be effective uh, and amongst us as a family and in the community around us. Um, after worship, we're going to be having communion. So if you can get yourself ready for that, and then we'll have the word. Enjoy. I want to invite you this morning to really press into the worship. Um, you know, when there's a song that we know quite well, it's easy for the words to just roll off our tongues and we, we forget what what we're actually singing. We don't even realize. I was running the other day and I had worship in my ear and I was singing a song and I got to the end of the song and I, I actually hadn't thought about a word that, that I had been listening to. And so I want to encourage you to, to look at the words, to think about what you're singing and to really press in and declare what you are, are singing this morning and, and press into God. The second one is a new one. Um, where we are declaring war on the enemy. And we want to call in the prophetic words that have been spoken over our city and over our country and declare that enough is enough, that the enemy is no longer taking ground. We are taking ground. And so I invite you to get up off your beds and to worship with us this morning.
Morning, everyone. It is so great and such an honor to be sharing communion this morning. And uh, just to know that we serve an amazing King that gave his life for us, that Jesus actually put up his life, that we may have life and life in abundance. So whatever you are hoping for this morning or wanting this morning, and whether it be healing, setting free, Jesus has done that for you. And uh, so this is part of taking communion. It's a thanksgiving and honor to Jesus. That is our Savior. He is. He set us free. He's. Uh, he's done everything necessary for us to have life in abundance. So as we partake this morning of His body and His blood, we do this in honor, thanksgiving, and obedience to His word. And we don't just have to do it once a month. He said, "Do this as much as you want to, and uh, in remembrance of me and in honor of me." And so we do that this morning. And uh, so you can just get the elements out and. We do this as I hope you're doing it as families, we're doing it together, Patty and I. So we thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken for us. Amen. And Jesus actually shed his blood for us. He he paid a huge price that we might have life. 
And uh, so His blood speaks a better word. It speaks of a new covenant that we are in. So we are in a new covenant. Such an honor to be in a new covenant. So as, as we drink His blood this morning, may that just be a washing clean of us. He died on the cross for forgiveness. We are forgiven. We are new people. And uh, so we live in this. We we have life. It, it's life-giving blood that He gave to us that we may have life and life to the full. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let us just pray. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you for sending your Son to die for each one of us. And we just give have thanksgiving and honor and glory to you, Jesus. And we go out this morning and just know that we can live life because you gave your life. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Morning, Victory Family Church. It's this time again that we can get into the Word of God and be able to receive by faith from Holy Spirit as He is the one who brings and reveals the Word of God to us. So this morning, I, I want to just share with you in a continuation of what I did last time about, uh, the, about the battleground that we're in, but winning the battle, which is an important thing for us. So I'm just going to pray, and then we'll get into it. Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you are the one that comes to enlighten us, to reveal, to teach us, to lead us, to guide us. And I ask that you take this word this morning and make it alive in us and make it bread to us that we may feast on it and that our way may be prosperous. So we want to honor you for that this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So I, I'm going to read to you a very popular portion of scripture out of Ephesians chapter 6. Most of us have heard this so many times, and we've read it so many times, where it talks about strong in the Lord and putting on the armor of God. Uh, but I'm asking you this morning not to go down a road where you say to yourself, well, I've heard this before. We always, the Word of God is constantly revealing more depths to us, and we need to stay open to that. So I, I'm going to read Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 11, but I'm reading it to you out of the Passion Translation, because for me, it's more descriptive. It paints the picture clearer as to what we're looking at. So Paul writes and he says, Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. And I just want to stop on that verse. Paul is saying that we will have supernatural strength be infused in us through our life union, our relationship with the Lord Jesus. Then he goes on to say that we are to stand victorious with the force of of his explosive power, very, very descriptive words. But these words are confirmed in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 when Jesus said that they had to wait because the Holy Spirit would come. And in Acts 1 8 he says, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that word power in the Greek is dunamis, which is the word that we use for dynamite. It is explosive. It, it will remove whatever's in the way. It's a very powerful picture of the, of the power of Holy Spirit. So here Paul is using a similar analogy. He's talking about the, the explosive power that we carry within us because Holy Spirit is in us. It is dynamite. And he says that this power flows in us and through us, in you and through you. Then he goes on to say, put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Some Christ, uh, uh, translations say of the devil. So the first thing is that God wants us to understand very clearly that we stand victorious in this battle in his power and strength, not in ours. And I want to say this to you that it's our strength. We are, have you ever tried to do stuff in your strength? We all have. 
And the end result is that we, we come to a place where it just doesn't work. It doesn't seem to move anything. Nothing gets moved. Nothing gets dealt with. So according to his strength, we will see things move. And it's an easy trap to fall into because a lot of times we, we, we try to get things done in our own strength and we forget about God. We don't, we don't bring the Lord into the picture. We don't bring him into the circumstance. But we don't bring him into the situation. And that is such an a, a easy trap that leads to nothing but a dead end. But again, this strength that the Bible is talking about comes by our life union, our relationship with Jesus. Folk, if we are not building our relationship with Jesus, it is telling us that we are not going to have the strength that we need when the battle is on. And so when we try and live in our own strength, we miserably fail. So when we have the power of God in us, and we do have the power of God in us, then I want to say to you, it's, it's like, it's a choice here. Hamster running on the little wheel to generate something, or do I choose the atomic reactor for power? The power of God is not that hamster on a wheel trying to generate electricity. The power of God is like that. It's greater than that atomic reactor that we actually have. And don't you long for that power? Don't you want that power, his strength, to, to be in you, not only today, but in your life, that as you move through life, you're moving in the strength of the Lord. I, it's something that just hit me when I was reading this and preparing and said, Strength has to come first in order to be effective with the armor of God. It, it kind of takes me back to that portion in the scripture in the Gospels where uh, the, the people saw demons being cast out and the, the, the sons of Sceva, you, you've read that, that, they try to cast the demon out of somebody and the demon said to them, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And it said, and the demon came out and tore them, and they, they ran naked. Seven of them ran naked away from this. The reality was that they were not coming against us in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Spirit. They were doing it in their own strength. And that was the result of that. So you and I need to understand that if, if, if we are going to want to have a, an effect in our battle, if we want to win the battle, if we want to see the victory in our battle, it begins with us being in that relationship with Him that empowers you and me. The Holy Spirit who is in us that empowers you and me, enabled to win the battle and push back the enemy and take the ground. It's not going to happen just through scriptural knowledge. It's not even going to happen just from some experiences every now and then or because you go to church every Sunday. This only happens when you stand in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, walking in and through you. And the reason for this is because the Word of God is very clear. It brings our protection. You know, Jesus has done everything for you and me already. He's not going to do any more than He has already done. And He's given all of that to us. He actually even said, the works that I have done, you will do and even greater than these. He's given us authority. He's given us His name. He's given us the ability to stand against the enemy and see the victory and not be pushed back, but to push the enemy down in that sense. So we are to be protected. God's saying us, I know you're in a fight. I know the enemy is out at you. I know there's a battle, not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers of darkness. So he said, I'm giving you this so that you can win the fight, that you can push back the enemy and take the ground. Paul says many times that we are to stand firm in the faith. He, he uses it in different portions of the scripture. We say stand. We, we know the scripture says when you've done everything, what do you do? You stand. But in here he says what we need to stand firm against. And that's interesting because he gives us clarity here. He gives us a strategy. He says the first thing is we need to stand against the evil schemes of the enemy. We need to stand against, and another word is strategies. We need to stand against the strategies and the schemes of the enemy. 
And we can only stand firm against those things when we understand that we have this power of God within us to do so. Secondly, God wants us to understand and identify our enemy. You know, the enemy loves to get us to fight one another. The enemy loves to get people in the body of Christ to fight against people in the body of Christ. And the reason he does that is because he gets the attention of the battle, which is supposed to be against him, off him, onto others. And that's why the word of God is very clear when it talks about unity within the body of Christ. And so we understand this, that God wants us to understand who our enemy is. And, and we have an enemy. We, we, we have an enemy who, who hates us. Jesus said he, his, his nature, his very character is to kill, steal and destroy. So we can see this in many manifestations through people's lives, even in scripture and even in the world. Watch the news and you'll see some of the stuff coming out today. So Paul says that we are to stand firm in our faith. Stand firm against the schemes. Stand firm against the craftiness or the trickery of the devil. It's interesting in the Greek when it says the schemes of the enemy, the word is methodia, which means methods. Do you understand that the devil has methods that he uses? He has methods by which he operates against you and me. And it says stand against these methods. Stand against them. We also understand that in the Greek, He's called a diabolos, which means he's a slanderer or an accuser. And that is the very nature of the enemy. The devil is a spirit being who works constantly to see how can he frustrate God's plan for your life? How can he frustrate God's purposes for your life? How can he frustrate the things in your life that you do not reach the desired result that God has for you? And so many times... We take our eyes off and don't understand the identity of our enemy and his schemes. And we start fighting our own circumstances. We fight against our own things. We fight each other. We fight against different things. And we don't even click for one second that actually our fight is not against these things. It's against the principalities and powers. You need to get a clear revelation that the enemy is out to frustrate your plan. When things don't go the way you've desired or you believe God has said they would go, it's clear the battle's raging in your life. He's coming against the very plan that God has for you. He's coming against and he's going to use schemes. He's going to, he's going to use trickery. He's going to use all kinds of things to bring against you so that you begin to see, well, what's the point? What's going on? I'm confused. And you know the word of God is clear. God is not a God of confusion. And so you and I need to understand and be aware that when we sense this unnatural things, have you ever experienced this, that suddenly there's a pattern of unnatural things start happening in your circumstances? Well, I want to say to you, that's a giveaway of the enemy. Because the Bible says that when Jesus was in the wilderness, the devil came and tempted him. And it says, after trying every temptation, he left him for a while, which means he was coming back and he did come back. And so... There is something you and I need to understand that we don't need to live in the realm of being devil conscious all the time. We need to be real, live in the realm that we have the power and the authority in Jesus' name to constantly enforce the victory in our situations, to constantly enforce. And I want to tell you, this fight is not a bad fight. It's not an exhausting fight. It's I think we get exhausted when we try and fight in our own strength. Paul says, I fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. Paul says we come from victory. We, we are more than conquerors. We have overcome. So we're not fighting for victory. We are enforcing the victory that already is there. And this is such a powerful thing for you and I to come to grips with. Because we need to know and understand and rejoice in the fact that, hey, we win. We overcome. Jesus, even facing the cross, he said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He knew what was going to happen. He knew what he was going to go through. He knew that when he said it is finished, he would land up surrounded by the enemy and all his cohorts. But we also know what happened when that took place. It said when Jesus descended, and I believe he descended into the realm 
of where, of where the enemy is operating, it says he took away from him the keys of death and hell. He stripped the devil right there of power. He stripped him of his authority. He stripped him of everything that he thought he could claim and lay hold to. I want to say to you this morning that you and I need to come to this revelation and understanding that the word of God says, greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Why? Because the one who died on the cross and was raised from the dead is the one who dwells in you and me. So we have the, the key holder in our lives of over death and sin. And when Jesus died on the cross, that was one of the greatest battles that ensued against Jesus' life. We can feel that. Jesus praying in the garden, uh, 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 drops of blood, as the Bible says, the anguish, the agony, knowing what's coming. And even himself praying and saying, I don't want to do this, but it's not what I want, Lord, it's what you want. And so often when the battle rages, the enemy want to try and bring us to that place where we say, I'm not going to go through with this. I'm going to stop the fight. I'm going to give up. This is too hard. Let me tell you, none of us have ever had it as hard as Jesus did that day when he prayed in the garden. None of us can even compare with the pain and the sorrow and the anguish that he went through. So I want to say to you, when Jesus died on that cross and he cried, it is finished, that was the final death blow to the enemy. That was the final death blow to the enemy. Jesus doesn't have to go back on the cross since after that time to defeat the enemy again. He's already defeated him. He broke the <clears throat> excuse me, he broke the power of the enemy at that point. The Bible says, and I love it, he says, when he took away the keys of death and hell, he led people who were captive. He led them out of there and took them with him to be with the presence of the Father. Isn't that the grace of God? Isn't that the grace of God? That Jesus redeemed people in a place of separation and took them with him into the presence of God. That's what the Word of God tells us. So Jesus destroyed the spiritual forces of evil. So why do we still have a battle? Why is it then that the enemy still has a go at us? Why does the enemy still try and block the purposes of God? And can I tell you this? The purposes of God is also for the earth. It's not just for you as a believer. The purposes of God is that God wants to see his kingdom established, ruling and reign on the earth. Because the word of God says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This earth does not belong to the devil. The word of God is clear when we listen to the teachings that we have the Lord, the earth is the Lord's, and we know where heaven is, and it talks about the prince of the power of the air. That is, in, in Greek, that is like, for a better word, the atmosphere around the earth. And I've said this to you before. The church is alive and well on the earth. Heaven is alive and well, and the enemy is sandwiched in between. And so we have the victory. The attacks that come against you is simply for you is a, a, a simply a desperate attempt for you to give up. Don't give up because you've won. Don't give up in anything because you have won the victory. And you know what? Nothing can ever be undone that Jesus has already done. On the cross, as we take communion today, let us remember the victory. Let us remember the, the, what we have because of the cross. It's not a time of sorrow. It's not a time of feeling sorry. It's a time of rejoicing in the victory we have when Jesus cried it is finished on that cross. It is a time for us to know that what he did will never, ever in all eternity be undone. Jesus is alive. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. So Father, I thank you that as his word has come forth, Holy Spirit, will you grip our hearts? Will you bring revelation to us? Will you cause this word to come alive? Thank you that your strength keeps us going. It is not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. It is not by our own doing, even our spirituality. It's because of who you are in our life that you keep us going. And we choose today to stand in your strength, rely upon you to enforce the victory 
in our lives and see the battles won in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Amen. Thanks, Charles. Um, we, we are reminded that this battle is around us and um, a powerful word there for you to understand the, the enemy wants to deceive you and make you falter. Um, Charles had mentioned that, I'm just going to read it, strength has come, needs to come first for us to experience that full armor of God. And we have to consider how we can be strong in the Lord, that when we wear this armor, that when the day of evil comes, we can stand. Knowing that the enemy is around us, he wants to attack. But when we are strong and have the armor of God, we're able to overcome. Um, I, I just encourage you, um, if you are feeling that the enemy is seemingly getting the better of you and you've lost your focus, contact someone about it. Um, there are people available right now for, for you to have some ministry. Mariki, Peter and Teresa are available. And we encourage you, if you want to make contact with them, go for it. If it's a friend or someone else, just say, I need to know the strength of God that is in me. Remind me that I can walk this out in faith. Um, we all have moments where we need to be reminded of this. And I encourage you to remain faithful, remain strong. Um, allow God's strength to, to work through your body that you may see yourself and know that you are victorious in this battle. So I encourage you, keep your mind focused on Him and you will see and know that God is your deliverer. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and I'm glad that you've joined us with us and participated and know that God will continue to participate with you as you walk out this day. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye, family. Goodbye. Cheers. <laughs>